The main um, method of doing RLT therapy we call joining through the truth. I'll be talking about this in the keynote. Joining through the truth means that you tell difficult truths to the people you work with, particularly the grandiose narcissistic people you work with, in a way that lets them feel not only that you're on their side, but that you're positively rooting for them. In traditional therapy, you form a narcissistic alliance with your client, a feel-good alliance with your client. And then, uh, well, when you've earned their trust, then you tell them the difficult truths. In RLT, we form the alliance by telling the person difficult truths about themselves right out of the starting gate. That's how that works. You're on their side. And what we look at, we have seven lenses in RLT that we look at. I want to focus just on one. Uh, this lens is uh, Pretty uh, Couples Therapy 101. Stance, stance, and dance. His relational stance, her relational stance, and the way they combine to produce a choreography. That's our client. That's our patient. Uh, that's what we want to change. That's our report card. To the degree to which clients are changing their stance and breaking up the choreography, our couples therapy is doing something. To the degree to which that's not happening, all sorts of great things are going on. People can have a lot of catharsis, people can move into vulnerability, people can have a lot of insight, but they ain't moving. So stance, stance, and dance is what we look at. The more she X's, the more he Y's, and the more he Y's, the more she X's. The more he controls, the more she rebels, and the more she rebels, the more he controls. You all got this? It's pretty basic. We also speak about what we call bad deals. The more, the more is one way we teach our students to talk about stance, stance, dance. Bad deals is another way. Bad deals look like this, scolding father to rebellious daughter. You have a scolding father, rebellious daughter, bad deal going on. You have a patronizing bully, helpless victim, bad deal going on. This is the recursive cycle. This is your vicious cycle, vicious circle. OK. We speak about relational deformities, not a cozy word. But it looks like this. I'm going to have trouble doing this with the mic. If intimacy looks like this, this meets this. Relational deformities look like this. This meets this. My particular quirk meets your particular set of quirks to bring about the vicious cycle that keeps um, hurting us. For example, here's, a, here's a, a typical relational deformity. Angry pursuit. How many of you have ever encountered angry pursuit? Angry pursuit. God damn it, get your butt out of that chair. Get yourself over here and love me now. Does that work very well? <laughs> but we see it all the time. It's a relational deformity. It's, it's a stance that will not work. And probably that engenders a reciprocal stance that locks it in. Insights and catharsis are not enough. Moving into vulnerability is not enough. There's a lot of couples therapy right now that's about moving people out of their defensive postures into vulnerable postures as if that alone will break up the dance. I don't believe it will. I believe that people do not know how to do this. When we speak to our clients, if we were dare to say to them, well, how do you think you should be intimate? 99 out of 100 of our clients will say, I don't know, that's why I'm paying you. Please teach me. We do. We're looking at the therapist as a mentor, as an explicit educator leading to behavioral change. We teach and prescribe new stances. Look, I think it's borderline abusive to call somebody out on their dysfunctional stance without virtually in the next breath teaching them what a more functional stance would look like. I think it's abusive to say to somebody, after you call them out on their dysfunction, say, angry pursuit, what do you think you should do? I think it's for us to say, so for example, teaching can sound as direct as this. 
Somebody says to me, or somebody says to their, to their partner, um, I hate how you're treating me. I hate how you talk to me. I think you're a pig. And I say, um, can I tell you what you just meant to say? Oh, all right. What you meant to say is, I really want to hear what you're saying. You have to speak to me respectfully in order for me to hear it. Isn't that what you meant to say? Yeah, what he said. Yeah, that's right. That's what I meant to say. We teach people how to do this. <laughs>